Imagine you're grading a project for days, and at the last minute, your client comes to you and says, we had to make some changes, we have a new timeline, we would like for you to do your little magic and just apply the grade to the new timeline. You know, I know, it's not as easy as that. So, one of the ways that you can do it is by saving your stills and then applying it individually. Problem with that is that by default, it's not going to carry the tracking data. So. Now imagine if you're working on a documentary or a long form episodic series and you have 1500 shots, this is a disaster. So what if there is a way to do all of this with a single click? Speaking of doing something with a single click, if you want to create Hollywood looks with just a few clicks, Kazi's toolkit is the answer. Listen to this. Jonathan said, bruh, your QT is the Bravo, man. Especially the charts, look DNA, and color compressor, damn. And I'm not gonna lie, his grid looks freaking sick. Currently, you can save $200 on Kazi's toolkit bundle. Click now. All right, so now we're inside Resolve, and this is the project that, let's just say, that I have graded, and the client is happy, we are good to go. We have some tracking shots, as you can see right here. So I'm tracking the face. So if I go through and it's it's a pretty involved node tree and it took quite a bit to get this look. Let's just say the client goes, we've made some changes to the edit last minute. And can you just go ahead and quickly do your little magic? So this is what we got. This is obviously ungraded. This does not look anything like what we got going on over here, not to mention, the timing has changed because they just added a new shot in here. And this is the one shot, the new shot that they added, okay? So not only we have to basically copy paste the same grade, we also have to grade this one shot. So the first step that you would take, and especially if you don't know the process that I'm gonna show you eventually, what you're gonna do is you're gonna save and grab all of these stills. So, I mean, you can do one at a time, grab still and then go to this shot and do grab still, or there's a faster way to do it. You can just like right click and say, grab all stills. And I like to do from middle frame because sometimes the first frame could be black, right? And then the last frame, same thing, like transition or something like that. So middle frame is a good representation of each shot. So I'll just do middle frame and then it's gonna go ahead and just create stills from every single clip here. So that is already basically getting us off to a good start. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna go to our new timeline, which you can access from here. And now that I'm in my new timeline, I can just go and kind of eyeball it, right? So like I can just go first shot, let's go here, first shot right here. Uh, so let's hide this and I'm gonna do middle click. Okay, so that is applied. I'm gonna go to the second shot, middle click, and then I'm gonna go to the third shot. One thing that I just absolutely hate is like, you know, this thing that happens, like it's always like in this mode and I hate it. So like you can just turn that off if you just go to thumbnail instead of like viewer. So like now it will give us the color, but it won't give us like the live preview because it just like slows down your machine, right? So like now we're gonna go to this shot, and we're just gonna keep going through, right? Like we're just gonna keep applying these grades uh, one by one. So you can imagine, I mean, obviously there's not a lot of shots here because this was a commercial, but now imagine if it's a documentary, like there are projects that I was working on that had 1800 shots when things like that would happen. And usually it's always those projects because that's where it's so complex. It's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle that somebody somewhere in a corporate office just doesn't like something and wants to change it last second and you can't say no to that guy, so you gotta do it. That is one of the ways that you will go about it, okay? But the problem here is that, remember shot number nine had, uh, let's go to old, shot number nine had tracking, so the face is tracked. Now if I go right here, to my new timeline and go to the shot number nine right here. So it's gonna be this right here. And if I go here and just double click on it, sure, this came through, but I don't see the little tracking sign underneath. And then if I move through, it's not tracking. So now just think about this. So that's like something that 
when I was getting into DaVinci Resolve and I would just like manually retract these shots because I didn't know like there was a way around it. So then if you're a little bit like more intermediate and know a little bit more about DaVinci Resolve, what you can do is this. So this is a little hack. So sometimes you would be like, well, let's right click and find an option what I need to do. Like they made it so confusing. You don't want to right click on the clip. You want to right click in the empty space. And then you want to go under apply grades using, and right now set to no keyframes, that's the default. You want to change that to either this or this, right? So like source time code or start frames. So I'm going to do source time code and we're just going to try it like if it works um, and it should. So now let's go back to nine and click on it. And if I do that and we click right here, now we got the tracking, okay? And now if I move through, it latches on. So that's pretty good. That solves that problem. Okay, let's keep going, right? So we're gonna keep going, keep going. We're gonna just make sure that we take mental notes of like which shots actually had tracking applied. So this one has tracking applied. This one has tracking applied. This one has tracking applied. You can open an Excel sheet, write all that. And like th that would be the traditional old school way. Okay. But the thing that I didn't know for the longest time and nobody talks about is this one feature that is about to blow your F in mind. So we can just go to our new timeline. I can right click here. I can go to timeline. I can go down here to color trace and I can go color trace from timeline. So once you click on it, I'm going to fast forward here. All right. So now we're in our project and it's smart enough to pick out timelines that are not currently active. So that's exactly what I want, right? Because old is where all the color grading is done and I want to apply it to the new one. So just go ahead, select this and hit continue then this is what's going to happen. Now, this example is pretty interesting because usually it's not like this. So this is like really funny that that's happening. And I'm glad because now you guys are seeing something that if it was too easy, then it would have been very valuable because you guys would have seen like different colors and you would have been like, Kazi, what's going on? Like in your example, we didn't see that. So blue and green, what does it mean? Green is a perfect match. It got it. It's like saying, hey, I don't need you, I'm good. See, it's set to automatic. Blue, it's confused. So it's giving us multiple choices and it's going, hey, which one should I pick? So it made a good call, but if I double click on it, it will lock in. So that's what we wanna do. Now I'm gonna go here and obviously he's picking the wrong shot. So I'm gonna go to the right one, double click, okay? And I'm gonna double click. And I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna double click, okay? This one, it already picked out. I'm going to double click here and Again, I don't know if it's a Resolve 19 bug or what the hell it is, but usually like it's really, really smart. So it's really funny. I'm making a tutorial on this, trying to show you how impressive this process is and it's working like it's 2000 freaking two. Um, but regardless, it's a lot faster because we don't have to go and pick a shot and right click and apply still and all of that. We can still fly through. Now the problem becomes that this is also a resolve bug where the thumbnails just like decide to disappear. So I hope that this doesn't happen with all the rest of the shots. So like now we're gonna match that. We're gonna come here, we're gonna match that. We're gonna come here, we're gonna match that. Let's just keep going. I'm actually really happy that this is happening. Uh, and then this is a perfect match that you guys like really get to see. Um when you run into an issue like that. So obviously remember like this shot was, uh, uh, you know, we don't have a grade for it. It's a new shot. So we're gonna do set as new shot. Just double click set as new shot. It's not gonna apply anything. It's gonna leave it alone. Keep going. What is this? This is, I guess this. And then go here is this. And then go here and it's this. Good. Now we have two options, copy grade and keep working, or we can do copy grade and exit. Also, there are a couple of things that are unchecked and you should just like leave them unchecked. So it does a really good job picking out all the essentials that you should have checked. Note stack is new to resolve 19. Uh, that wasn't there before. 
Uh, but if you want to turn on versions, let's just say if in the previous version, I had like a lookbook created, multiple looks for each scene, then I would probably want to turn on all versions so they come through, but I'm not going to do that for this one. And I'm just going to go ahead and click copy grade and exit. Let's see what it does. Boom. Look at this. Everything came through. Now let's go and check if our tracking came through. Our tracking came through. I mean, it looks like it's there, but let's see if it latches on and everything is good. So here's the face tracking. Let's see. I mean, come on. So I wish it there was a better demonstration, but I'm just so happy that we had to troubleshoot it together. Um, so this is the worst case scenario that you're seeing. And again, this is the first stable version of Resolve 19. So it could be that. But in an ideal world, it should just work. I'm talking about, again, 1500 shot documentaries. And I would just do color trace. And I'm talking about Resolve 16, Resolve freaking 12. And it would just like latch on and it would just copy 95% of the stuff there. And then I would just like have a cup of coffee. I'll sit down and I'll match the rest manually, just like we did. And uh, look at how fast this process was. So color trace is something I did not know about and nobody ever told me. I had to find it and learn it on my own way. And I did it by reading user guides. I'm not kidding. I know that makes me a psychopath, but just hear me out. You should do the same. There is no better book on DaVinci Resolve than their user manual. Just eat it up. Go to Starbucks for the next five days and just spend four hours going through every single thing. Take notes, maybe take your laptop, try a few things, and then just continue reading. Just, just absorb it. And I promise you, you're going to learn so many things. Some things are going to be basic, but I'm telling you, even those fundamental things sometimes can connect the dot to something very complex, just like how I came across Color Trace ages ago. So if you guys found this video helpful, do me a favor, smash the like button. More importantly, check out the link to the toolkit. You can download the free version or by clicking the special link in the description, you can save $200 off Kazi's toolkit bundle. If you have any content suggestions, drop a comment down below. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love. Peace, fam.